Well, it's mid-July, uh, summer's winding down. The season is just right around the corner. So I called Ryan Bland today. Uh, he's gonna help me get my kill plot back into shape. This plot's just right around the corner here, Blando. Okay, what do we got over there? Checking out a food plot with Jeff Evans today. He said it's in pretty bad shape, so we'll see what we're in for. Just a little killing plot. Just There's a little cove where the, uh, where the woods kind of make a big bend. And so I planted some clover in there a couple years ago. And uh, kind of went to the wayside a little bit. I haven't really maintained it a little bit, so I think I'd like to go in there and just start fresh again. Perfect. Tear yeah. it all up, so. Well, let's start with getting a, a soil sample here. All right. Knowing that this food plot was at square one, I brought a couple soil sample kits and the probe yep. because a soil sample is the most important part of a food plot. So let's go over there. Load some of this corn down here to we can get back here a little easier. It's been so dry here. I mean, it's middle of July and it, it almost feels like the middle of August. Well, I get Bland back in there and we can tell right off this food plot's in bad shape. Well, here's this plot, Blando. And like I said, this drought's taking a pretty good beating on it. So my idea when I created this was, uh, these, you know, these two creek branches kind of converge down there and there's a big bluff to the uh, south here. These deer kind of pile off that bluff in the evening, you know, to head out to this corn. And my idea was just to stop them you know, and just give me a, you know, give them a chance to stage up right here. So um, I definitely want to keep this plot. It's, it's you know, been a, been a good spot for me, um, but I think we just need to rip her up and start over. So. Yeah, should be no problem. It's a pr pretty small plot. Um, first thing we need to do is take some soil samples, see what the pH is and see, see what kind of nutrients we're lacking or, okay. or have too much of. Right. Yeah. When I first saw this plot, it's a very small kill plot tucked back in a cove in very, very bad shape, but not undoable. I know for sure we needed to test this dirt, so it's time to do some probing. So Bland, what uh, what pH levels are we going for here? Um, optimum is 6.5. Uh, White Tail Institute makes a few different blends of uh, seeds that you can go a little bit lower than that, a little bit higher. Uh -huh. um, so ideally, we want to try to see that 6.5 range, and we'll see what kind of other nutrients that we need and other fertilizers. You know, when I put this plot in, I wasn't even thinking about pH levels. I was just team ramrod, get this thing in. Uh, you know, so Bland said, man, that's the most important thing, is get that pH right. For majority of forages that you're going to plant, you want an optimum pH of 6.5 to produce the highest amount of yields. Think that'll do it, Bland? Yeah, I think so. That should be enough for this area. What's the, uh, what's the plan? Well, we'll send this in. Um, I like to send them in to Whitetail Institute. It takes about seven to ten days to get back. You do a local co-op, sometimes it's upwards of three and four weeks. Sounds good. I, I want to be sitting there in 45 days so let's get it done man all right sounds cool good. good deal on a plot this size which is only about an eighth of an acre uh, we took you know three or four samples from different spots throughout the plot which might be a little bit of overkill but it's going to give us the best average you know soil reading and tell us exactly what our soil needs there you go we're good now good now Throw to the line soil sampling is one of the easiest yet most neglected steps in establishing a successful food plot well, today was pretty simple. We got Ryan in here. We got our soil samples taken. Step one complete to getting this baby back into shape. Mm -hmm.